superseded the law because God's will knows no boundaries, as our master has said. It can change the course of destiny. Wake the dead. I remember in India, master was there and some uh, uh, devotee was dying. And they asked him to go in, but he didn't go in. Finally, he went in. And the devotee lived. I said to him, before you went in, you knew God wanted you, to, wanted you to go in, didn't you? He said, yes, sir, I would not have gone in. Because the greater the person, the saint is, the more they realize that God is the doer and that his divine will can do anything. It can change the course of destiny, wake the dead, cast mountains into the sea, and create new solar systems because God's will created them in the beginning. And it still exists and will exist eternally. And we are a part of that. But through delusion and maya, we, f we feel separated from the divine will of God. Man, as an image of God, possesses within him that all-accomplishing power of will. And so we have that power. The only thing is we have to remove the separation that exists between us and God. And we can do that by superseding this destiny or this thing called faith because we are children of God. Now another point in this struggle for destiny is the control of mind and thought patterns. And this is very important. The control of mind and thought patterns. How the mind works in changing your destiny is this. We have certain thought patterns and they come first. We establish those thought patterns. You take an ordinary person, worldly living, they have within themselves certain th thought patterns. You take the saint, he has certain thought patterns. And so first the thought pattern is established, and you and I establish the thought pattern. We may have forgotten when it was established, when these bad habits bother us, but we established it all right. So the first thing is the establishment of the thought pattern. Then the life force then flows. The life force within us is the cosmic energy of God. That life force flows and passing through the thought pattern, pattern materializes it. And we perform action according to that thought pattern. That's how it works. And so then you can see it is important to watch the thought pattern. Keep them right. Keep them right. And then the materialization or the fulfillment will be right. If the thought pattern is wrong, the whole picture is wrong. It is very important to keep the thought pattern right. Now, a strong mind is also necessary to change these deep ingrained habits and modes of living. You all know that. I don't have to tell you this. We're all here in the same boat, so to speak. It is very difficult to dislodge those bad habits and modes of living, isn't it? You get up every day and the first thing you know, you're doing the same thing you did yesterday. Whether you want to or not. Why? Because you're simply a product of habit, that's why. And if the thought pattern is right and the habits are good, you're all right. But it's too bad to say that they are not always the way we'd like to have them. And so this strong mind is necessary to change these deeply ingrained habits and modes of living. Right thought patterns must be reinforced by soul consciousness. They must be reinforced by soul consciousness directing the life force within us as mental power to materialize from these thought patterns the right action, which will better our destiny. That is, you may have a good thought pattern within yourselves, but if it is not followed by soul consciousness directing the divine will within you, it will not be carried to fulfillment. So these things are necessary. Thought patterns are just the beginning. They must be followed by the soul consciousness directing the divine will. Now, your ordinary ego consciousness cannot direct divine will. It directs these ordinary wills of which I have spoken, mechanical will, 
the explosive will of youth and the thinking will and even the steady will. But that's not enough. We must have divine will to change our destiny fully. And divine will means the will within us is united with God's will. And so thought patterns are necessary, but they must be reinforced by the power of God within you. Otherwise, you will not carry them to fulfillment. They will help you, but that's not enough. They must be followed by action, by spiritual discipline, and that means by uniting your will with the presence of God within. Now, <clears throat> strong thought can materialize anything. Strong thought can materialize anything. In India, some of the uh, Hindus can eat poison and live. Why? Because of this very thing. Strong thought can materialize anything. Because how did God produce this universe? First thought about it. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth, and they were, were without form and void. Where were they? They were in his thought. And then what did he do? What did he, do? he used force. He used action. He used the great cosmic energy to materialize that thought pattern. And so can we. We can overcome many things. Now don't go home and say, I guess I'll try a little sulfuric acid today. 